happy. Um, time to do another little video. So I had a request, actually it was this morning, um, about a video topic of talking about base design and I think we did a video one time where we just sort of poked through, looked to some other bases, but really wanted me to talk more about what are what are the principles of a good base? What are you really looking for? And so uh, we're going to intermix that with a uh, with a base hit, hopefully. I don't, I don't know what base is actually going to. Um, but we're going to talk about rimmers, prepping, the main hit, and then the various pieces that go along with that. And um, so we'll hit a couple topics and we're going to go back out to this, this uh, fleet that's going to get hit and then we'll talk about some more topics. Uh, the first thing is rimmers. People that are just going to go around the edge of your base and um, just hit what they can hit in an, in a way and such that they're not going to take any damage. It's it's really they're gonna it's it's a hit of opportunity. They're gonna they're gonna take what they can as long as they don't get hurt. <clears throat> so the most important thing that for that is your distance from your outside. You know they're not going to come into the part where they're going to start to get taken damage. So that's why they say the certain amount of walls, certain amount of water. And what people have learned is um, the game is not actually uh, the same on all sides. For example, um, how close you can hit something from up here is not the same as how close you can hit something from down here. You can prep, I think if I remember this right, you might have to check on the forums, but which directions are worse. I think the southern directions going up are safer. That can be the three water and the two land, whereas coming down actually has to be three water and three, or when I said three water and then two walls, coming from the top going down has to be three waters and three walls, or four waters. Um, so like in all reality, this gun Let's, say, let's take this one for example. This gun from here can probably get prepped by an assault missile from from right here, right? <clears throat> if we just flip the entire base and they had to come out from this side, then maybe they can't. Actually, they could because that's still only one wall. Um, so, so that's a little subtlety, right? Uh, they say three wall. I mean three waters, a land, and two walls, but in some directions it's three waters, a land, and three walls. Um, so that's why you might see sometimes that somebody gets prepped and, and you're like, eh, they couldn't have reached. And it all depends on which direction you're coming in. But in, in your design, you, you need to be designing so that your outpost, your warehouses, your the things that you don't want to get killed by um, casual people um, that's what you want to protect if you're in an area that hello if you're in an area that doesn't get rimmed much then it's not as big of a deal uh, I I don't ever get rimmed the the people that I typically hit these days are big enough that you know they're they're just if they want to hit you back they're gonna hit you back um, and if they don't hit you back, they're probably not going to rim you because they know if they if I rim them, if they rim me, I'm just going to hit their, I'm just going to smash their base again. So they just don't bother. Um, but different different sectors um, and different levels that 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 thread is there. So just you know account for that. And depending on what level you are, like for, for example, protecting things from rimmers is is all depends on what's important to you right now you can see there's nothing here upgrading there's not even anything researching this is all done there's nothing left in any of this so do I care if any of that gets smashed no I, I don't care at all I do care if my launch pad gets smashed but in all reality if you're a lower level and you don't hit a lot of bases you don't care that your launch pad gets smashed you'd probably want to put your launch pad out somewhere here and then pick one of your labs that you really care about that's doing an upgrade that you really don't want to get set back and put that in here you know if you have a dock that's only like a level six or seven or lower do you really care if it gets hit nah not really you 
might be out in half an hour, but a level 10 dock, you're out for four hours. So you have to gauge for yourself what's important and what you need to protect and what you don't really care about. Uh, sometimes people actually forget that, um, hey, there's an operation hub out. That's weird. I am not touching that sucker. Um, okay, now I'm distracted. You have to decide what's important to you. Oh, the outpost. Some I have hit bases, and I think some people don't realize that an outpost accounts for a large uh, taking of what the attacking fleet takes home. You want to protect the outpost more than you want to protect some random warehouse. If you have to have something exposable, it's better to have one warehouse exposed than it is to have your outpost exposed. Um, so let's, let's check out this. Let's check out this uh, base. I have not looked at it ahead of time, so I have no idea what I'm walking into. Generally, bases 50 and above are not dead bases. Uh, generally, once you've hit level 50, you've committed to I'm going to play for a while. <laughs> Um, so, I actually did poke my head in this space earlier today. I just didn't remember that I did. So, just for giggles and the fact that we're already here, let's just go ahead and do it. <clears throat> nice thing about a Dreadnought is that um, it can't hold a whole lot of cargo anyway. So, even though it looks like there's not a lot of cargo here, I, I might could walk away with 500%. Um, I don't really have to have full warehouses. <laughs> like if I had the new the new ships, right? Oh, that's going to take me a little bit of a weird turn. And I'll show you what I did to these. I, uh, I refitted them. To, um, so he's got one, two, three, four, five. And I have no um, pinch. So it might be a little smart if I actually came right here and took that guy out. So I'm actually more interested in getting a little bit of the VMs out of the way. I don't think these two are probably going to fire on me. Maybe. Yep, they're all going to fire on me. Well, let's see how it does. One, two, three, four, five. So we got five. Let's see how we do. Um, nice thing is that the VMs are like quicker because they're not going to have uh, the armor. Um, I put a lot more hailstorm on these boats. As you can see, the, their VMs are barely even making it past this level. A couple aren't going to make it through. So I have all five shooting at me. Yeah. So at least we got one out of the way. It's not going to get worse, it's only going to get better at this point. And actually, it would be nice if we just take another one out. That'd be cool. Let's see if we could do this and not get shot by this Howie. Whoop, 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 shoot. That was actually taking a lot of damage. <clears throat> you know me, I go over 25% so fast. <laughs> oh, I should have shifted over a little bit so my ship didn't have to turn. We're going to go for the Howie, this, I mean the um, Bombard this time. Um, going for the Bombard will actually probably take out half of these mortars. So I don't think I have a picture of it, but there was one base design that had it where um, you were taking out at least three or four turrets before you could take out any bombard, any bombards. And the guy was hitting with the base kind of like, a fleet kind of like what I had, and he was just having a time trying to get any mortars to land because he was all of the bombards were like back like this one is and it was like bang 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 or something like that and 
you know, you had to have most of the turrets dead before you could actually kill, kill a bombard. Um, so he's got three. So, you know, I'm going to be fighting, I'm going to be fighting the bombards the whole way through this base. I don't have a pinch, so there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Just, you know, pile through, do what you can. I get this one out, it'll be a bit easier. And get rid of some of the, um, some of the mortars probably wouldn't hurt either. That's probably good enough. We'll turn it down and and but killing this one, I might end up killing one of these. And now I'm I'm gonna be down to two mortars, so it's really a non-event at this point. It's just a time issue. Um, one more mortar and that one's dead. I think it's gonna get through this time, so we'll move up to here. I'm actually gonna do this one because this is what's gonna keep me up. Oops, shoot. Oop. That is not what I meant to do. I did not mean to get in the range of that, and there's not a whole lot I can do about that. No, we're just going to take a little bit of damage from it. I'm trying to trying to turn out of the way of some of stuff like that is sometimes just not worth the effort. There we go. Okay. You're going to want to go here, oh, just to here, okay. Yeah, I think you're going to do a couple of volleys over here, so that's good. Um, you see how he's protecting his, his advanced lab inside his circle? Well, he still has stuff he cares about in there, right? And, um, let's see, that's there. I can probably turn all the way down here and not get hit by it. Nice thing about Cerebus is you, you have a little bit of room to move. Howies, you don't. Howies, you're you just barely outrange them. <clears throat> so we're actually gonna walk out of here. If I didn't walk in front of that Howie, I would not have taken much damage. So I'll show you the build. Oops, come on, all the way through. I'll show you the build of this uh, fleet. Um, it's actually the two ships that I already had for dreads that I was using before that just did not have enough hailstorm. Those actually didn't have to change very much at all very very short refits those were like a day refits on, on each one and then I, I remember I had originally five dreadnoughts and one has assault mortars and that stays on my base now so I had two other ones I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with so one of those took a little bit of effort to refit and the other one basically almost just put siege mortar on it and I was almost done so two of them two of them took a little bit of work but not a ton of work So per my general theory of base hitting, I'm not going to bother that guy's dock. Because I can, from shooting at this, I can hit every, I'm pointing at the screen so you don't know what I'm pointing at. I can hit everything in here. Um, you see when I shoot this, this will die. Because I'm shooting this, right now I'm shooting this, and that's going to almost die. Um, so he's protecting what he wants from Rimmers. He has three water, and see, he doesn't have walls, and but he has they're, they're not it's not right up against the wall. Same over here, he has three, and this one is not right up against the wall, so that's good. And that that's that's dead. Okay, so we're done here. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm gonna get dead now. You gotta be kidding me. Come on. Come on. Oh, I didn't get I didn't get hit yet, because I would have got a stupid little message. Okay. Whew. Okay. I lucked out on that one. I can see I got five hundred percent. It didn't even look like there was a lot in there. Alright, bookmark that guy, because I don't farm, so if I hit you one time, I'm probably never gonna hit you again. Usually when I fill my bookmarks is when I get it itching to move. So, okay, the next thing on the list, prepping. So, prepping is getting you up to your 25% and making it more likely that the main hit will be successful. 
what does that mean? Uh, that means two things. One, getting rid of, of problematic turrets. And then two, getting rid of as much of the defend fleet as you can. Because the defend fleet does not account towards the 25%. So the more of the defend fleet you can get out of the way in the, in the prep, the less you have to deal with in the in the real five minutes. In the official, in the official, I'm hitting the base. I'm committed. If I leave, he's going to have a bubble. So that, that's why you see in videos where I'm not a big fan of ships moving a whole lot. You know, right now in this base, this is the only ship that moves. When you enter in here, what it's going to want to do is move right here because it's a sonar ship. So I just want to know if a sub comes in this. I want to know if a sub tries to come in the back here. That's really all that ship there is there for. Um, the rest of the ships don't move at all. And depending on how your base is organized, depends on whether your ships need to move any or not. <clears throat> I would never want a ship to leave the safety of your guns. If they're going to move, they need to just they need to move within the safety of your guns. And, and you need to get somebody to come in your base from different angles and just say, hey, pop a ship in the base. Let me just see what the defend fleet does. If the fleet's going to move, you're not going to die, but I just want to know. Because if it's out here, I can kill any ship on mortars. I'll keep running away from it until it hits its maximum patrol range, and then it's easy to kill. And I have a lot of patience for that kind of stuff. Some people don't. You want to be careful of which turrets you put up front that are going to get killed off easily. If they're important turrets to you, don't don't let them get killed off easily by having them up front. <clears throat> I have for prepping what you're going what people are going to do on this base is they're going to definitely kill this one. They're going to at least kill these three buildings. They're going to try to avoid this one because this one has no value except for a mortar fleet. And if it is a mortar fleet, then they might try to kill that one. Um, and then they're going to see if they can kill this one. And they're going to see if they can kill this and stay below the 25%. Let's say they do. Now they're, now they're up to about here and it's free. So now what does the rest of your base look like? Well, now the rest of your base is still alt alternating uh, Cerebus and, and uh, Bombard rockets, which this one's going to change because this is actually not alternating. Um, and this one's going to turn into a... Um, I might have at least one Halo. I might have more depending on how it does or how other people do it, but it takes nine days, so I'm going to at least build one. It might go there. I, don't, I have no idea. Um... So you, you really got to, from, from each design, figure out what's going to get prepped. You, you need to think about it in your head. Well, what are they, they going to take out? And do I care? Will the base hold well after 25% of it is gone? And that's why I'm starting to see some more bases do something like this, because they want to force, they want to choose. When you design your base, you want to help choose what is that 25% that's getting smashed. So I took out the resource generators, because if the resource generators are all up in here, they account towards a percentage of a base. Stuff up here is not going to get smashed on a prep. That's why you see sometimes people will put, they'll put the shipyard right here. They'll put the, I don't even know where it is. They'll put this. Oh, there's nothing turning in there. I got to get something researching. They'll put that over here. Um, I actually hide this one out of the way. Because I, when it's upgrading or researching, I don't want that set back. Not that I really use it a lot, but I had it at my entrance one time, and I was just never getting any research done. <clears throat> having it dead opposite and not having rimmers, it actually never gets hit. Um, even if the whole rest of the base gets smashed, that actually still usually almost always lives. Um, so turrets, ships, ships don't count towards 25%, the main hit, so there's three types of ships that can hit you, missiles, mortars, and blitzers, you need to think about all of those, bigger bases, higher level bases, do not see missiles anymore, I, I don't see anybody hitting a large base with missiles, 
so having a three flak and heavily armored Goliaths, they're redundant of each other. <clears throat> missiles, siege missiles, just don't have the DPS to take out a bunch of Goliaths plus all the turrets if you have at least one flak alive. So the flak that I use, I use explosive defense, which means you can't take a bunker buster and kill it. That's that's really all that means. I, I don't expect mortars to take it out. I expect a bunker buster, and it'll take yeah, a little over half the life of it. <clears throat> so, um, you know, three flak is actually kind of redundant for a base this big. If you have a small, if you have a smaller base and you have smaller hitters hitting you, uh, siege missiles is still very viable. So three flak might be might be reasonable for you. Different sectors are different. Some sectors have a lot more missile attacks. Some sectors have a lot more blitzers. Some sectors have a lot more mortars. Uh, blitzers for a while was a huge problem, a huge problem. Um, so I went with the tact of the ships are ballistic. The turrets and then the turrets are explosive and yes you can have 80 percent resistance or 83 86 percent resistance to explosive um, aka my own ships that um, I can't show you they don't maybe it shows it here 87 percent resistance to explosive damage defense so you gotta say oh well maybe you shouldn't be using them Eh, well, I also have 34% evade and 20% ballistic defense, and they're in packs of five. So unless it's a spread weapon, unless it's a splash weapon, I'm just not going to get through all five. You, you can have all howies, and you, you might not kill me. You, you might kill a lot of them, but you're only going to be working on one at a time. So, even at 87%, I would still die if I had to face all of these. Um, so my my short range are explosive, my ships are uh, ballistic, and then I'm actually I'm thinking of doing some halos, so I have penetrating damage as well. So your your ships are probably going to be tailored to one or the other, and you need to think about your your turrets versus your defend fleet to be complementary. Um, so blitzers, you need something to either slow them down, or you need something to um, something that's hard to kill, which is why you see a lot of double walls. Um, you can pretty much assume that a building and a wall kind of make a double wall. Um, if you could do triple walls, that's even better. Single walls are probably not even worth doing. Um, it, it just removes one volley. Um, mortars. I think a lot of people are starting to understand bombards. Each projectile from a bombard targets one mortar shell, and it has a probability of hitting. If it misses, no other bombard projectile will fire. It is a one for one. Each projectile is targeted to one um, mortar shell. If the, if the percentage hits it, then it hits it. If percentage misses, it misses. So with me using a uh, only eight um, siege missiles, siege mortars, <clears throat> if you notice a lot of times, there's only one bombard shooting them down at a time. I think you probably just saw in that last base, there were three bombards. They probably all overlapped each other at some point. Only the close one was shooting because I didn't have enough to actually... Because let's see if it actually shows you. You can have 16 salvos come out at a time. Well, I only have 8 VM shooting at I only have 8 siege mortars shooting at you. So the next bombard is not going to engage. Now, if it was all, um, if I had a complete fleet of um, shockwaves, yeah, then the second one would actually kick in. When you have more than 16 projectiles coming down, and you have 16 mortar shells coming down, that's when the second bombard is going to kick in. So this one's going to deal with this range. Then when it's dead, this one will pick up. 
and then this one will pick up when this one's dead, and this one will pick up when that one's dead, and this one, well, that's it. Well, this one's going to eventually not be a bombard. Um, so that's how bombards work. I've seen a base where uh, Hailstorm on a Goliath worked crazy well. I couldn't land, I couldn't land a mortar shell to save my life. But Hailstorm only really works good if the mortars are going at the ship or over the ship. Hailstorm here doesn't really protect this. If the if your mortars were coming from this direction and they were going over this ship to get here, they do protect because they are going to go up. All right, but they don't go out very far, but they will go up. Um, so that's one thing if you want to do hailstorm, and they need, they actually have to be in front of the guns, which makes the ship a lot more susceptible to being prepped. Um, what else? I actually have one. I'm keeping one ship that actually has mortars. It's all assault mortars, so it actually has a very high um, damage potential if they all land. All I'm really trying to do with this ship is say, hey. If you're going to come at my base, you got to burn some of your some of your gun slots with hailstorm. That's really all I'm saying. <laughs> That's the reason that ship exists. It, I just I don't want you to go all guns on me. I want to force you to not use all shockwave all shockwaves. Um, so blitzing. Oh, the other thing I didn't write down: subs. The new subs. I saw my old design that looked like um, this guy's base <clears throat> that I had. Um, remember this one? Remember this design? So what he did. Um, I got another buddy that has basically this design that. The slightly older one where this stuff was out here, right? And that was actually this was up to here, um, but he had four Clias. His base was totally smashed because the sub did was the sub came in, and I didn't, he didn't have any missiles. He had um, um, the Cerebus and then uh, Vic uh, Victory Mortars, basically exactly what I used to have. Um, so I think sub came in kill a couple of glass and go up in here and when it when it surfaced and then we'll come back down here and and kill more and then once it killed off all of the defend fleet and then came in with dreadnoughts and mortars and just cleaned up the entire base um, so you've you've all seen this base and and um, but this basic design and you're also seeing this a lot higher level people they're the Goliaths are what matters the most and they're using a lot of sentinels. I'm seeing a lot of sentinel missiles. Uh, a lot of really high level people using it. Uh, let me show you a really high level base of a problem that I of prepping. A problem that I think he's really gonna have when somebody really doesn't like him. And that's this base. There's one huge flaw in this base. So this base has five Goliaths, which is good. He has a thing he's prepped. There's no um, sniping here. There's no sniping here, and I'm pretty sure there's no sniping there. Um, that is snipable, but uh, a lot of times, if you're a higher level person, you really care about your launch pad way more than you care about your dock. Um, so, what do you see here? Two waters. Those can be prepped with mortars. You could you could take that out with a mortar fleet and you probably might get shot by some of these but if you're assault mortars you could take out this one this one this one and then if you come in with a with a um with a blitz fleet you know you you pick your poison what you want to run through or what you want to pinch you might pinch these but you might also Depending on where you are in 25%, you might also pinch that one. Maybe, maybe not. Don't know. Uh, you you would not prep that one. You probably wouldn't even pinch that one. Um, so what I would probably do 
since I know I am explosive damage, I would likely pinch these two ships and see if I could pinch that one. I'd run through, I'd use assault missiles, kill this one, this one, this one. I would plan on running through this one, running through these two Goliaths, which look like thuds, and then I then I would definitely plan on pinching these two because this is definitely siege cannon. And this, I am assuming, is going to be a salt cannon, so you can assume it has auto loaders, and they hurt. They hurt something fierce. Siege cannons hurt something fierce, too. So, especially if that has auto loaders. So, I would prep these two. If you can grab that at the same time, that would be awesome. Because once you're around it, killing it from the backside is very, very easy because there's no wall behind it. And then you just sort of keep your distance a little bit. You would never, you probably never end up hitting that one. You might do it on a comeback and then die while you're doing it. Um, but you could pick that up, that up, that up, that up, that up, and that up. <clears throat> so that's a base that I think has a huge um, issue. Um, let me show you something. I saw a base the other day that I thought was really interesting. And this URL, uh, anybody, I'm not, I actually am logged in, but I'm pretty sure that you can get to the same URL, imager.com slash A, and that's a capital O, 3, H, 7, P. And this just has, I just, I, I collect images, I'm starting to collect images of bases. And the most recent one I stuck up there, I got a buddy that, um, he used to have kind of like a purple, uh, Masters of the Universe thing. This one's like way cooler. I keep forgetting to send that to him. Um, this base. Let me do it this way. If I come here and do this one. Alright. So, um, this base I, I actually kind of like. I'm really thinking about this base as, as my new base. Its biggest problem um, Doc is, is snipable. Okay. That's its biggest problem. Um, it is separating, and I don't necessarily agree with all of its turrets. It's a lot of Howies. Um, but I watched this base get hit. And they were using strike cruisers with enough anti-mortar that the four VMs didn't really matter. Um, and in the prep, took out this Howie and this... Goliath, but then when it came back in, and that was because it burnt, ran out of time, killing this one Goliath took almost five minutes. Um, then when it came back in, there's a bombard here, a bombard here. So taking out this next turret was just a little challenge because that bombard was there. Taking out this Goliath, which ended up being Rippers, um, was very challenging because the bombard is behind it and wasn't getting hit by much splash and so he actually he didn't die he timed out right here he didn't get he didn't even get past this goliath but if he did if he made it down here now he still has to deal with this one this one is so far in it missiles aren't going to prep that that one's so far in missiles are not going to prep it it's really like you have more turrets you have a, a nice service here to catch catch to catch more blitzers a, a decent one here I'd probably actually put it right here and then one here which is in a horrible spot for one I would stick that here um, I would actually stick it here and then um, have the have the bombard here with like the howie there maybe um, <clears throat> But he has room for uh, warehouses, which it looks like he doesn't get uh, broken into very much. His launch pad, his outpost. Um, but that, that's the sort of stuff you're looking for. You, you don't want your you don't want your ship sniped. You don't want you know, too many turrets sniped. Uh, you know, to kill the first turret, you will be in the range of four victory mortars. Okay, so you're not going to take a Sea Wolf 
prep a cheap sea wolf prep fleet and go take out and go get cheese up a couple turrets. You're not going to do that. If you want a turret, you're going to get hit by this Goliath and you're going to get hit by four uh, Victor and Wars. That's that's what you have to deal with to prep on this base, and and that's part of that thinking, right? So um, so I actually think this is a pretty interesting base for a design. Uh, I have not mapped it out yet, so I don't really know. I don't have like a um, map editor tool to, that has this one yet. Um, and I wanted to show one other base that's a little bit of a lower level because showing you bases that are my level or higher doesn't really do you a whole lot of good because, um, you know, just people that friend me from YouTube, I'm up to 188, so there's a lot of people up here that but a lot of people are in that 30-ish, the old levels, they're in the 30th, 30-ish range. Uh, one guy I talk to a lot, so as I really need to show you bases that don't have Goliaths in them. They don't have Dreadnoughts in them. Um, this guy. So this guy, I, me and him sort of talk a lot and follow each other around a lot. Um, he has a reasonable base. So his base, um, you know, I'm going to kill his dock, of course, if I go through, but he's protecting it from rimmers, and that's part of what he really cares about. Um, now, he has the thing where these some of these turrets are really easy turrets. They're not easy for missiles, because he has three flak right here, which I, I don't agree with, but whatever. Um... To me, those two are just cheap, cheap prep. But you wouldn't want to prep them unless you're hitting with a missile fleet. Um, he's dealing with blitzers by one, two, three, four, all separate, separated. These two eh, might not be pinchable together. You wouldn't pinch this one. You'd prep this one. These two actually are pinchable together, but because there's so many turns, it wouldn't do you a whole lot of good. You would pinch it if you pinched it when you got in the range of this one. Uh, you'd actually want to pinch it when your ships are about here, uh, but you're going to get fired up the whole way around, right? Um, so he's dealing with that. All of his, which is not true anymore. At one time, all of his ships were assault missiles, so he was really taking it from the viewpoint of turrets are explosion defense ships are penetrating um, and then the one armor you didn't really have to have was uh, ballistic but it looks actually like he has these are these look like ballistic sort of guns this one this one this one <clears throat> so he might be more worried about um, blitzers for his defend fleet uh, and then for dreadnoughts he's really looking at bombard, 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 bombard. So he's really going for the idea of, you know, you're, you're, you might have eight siege mortars, but you, they're not going to, they're not all going to land. And I don't think he hits much bases. So look, he doesn't care about his launch pad. It's just stuck out there with everything else. In fact, it's the outermost thing. So he knows it's going to get destroyed. But if you don't hit bases, who cares? You know, all he cares about is, is his core stuff. He has three three water, and I think three. That looks like three, probably three walls. That's three water, and that's two wall. That's one wall. That might be marginally marginally reachable. I'd have to work at it, but then again, they're only going to grab one warehouse at that point, right? So it's not that bad. It's not. It's not. Oh, I can't click on them. It's not the worst thing in the world, but he has a nice long maze, and and a turn. You know another thing about a base is a real turn is two lands, not one land, two lands. That causes your ships to actually turn, because ships that have a very fast turn speed, if it's just one land, it's not a turn. It's just a little wiggle. They just sort of scoot in. They just sort of shimmy, and they just scoot on through and don't really even slow down very much. But it doesn't matter how fast your turn speed is when you have two lands. It actually has to turn the ship to the other direction 
turn the ship to face the other direction, turn the ship, turn the ship, turn. So these are actually are real turns. Um, kind of a little goofy here, you know, whether you come in right here and do a little turn or this wasn't here and you just had to go further in, that probably doesn't really matter. Um, so that's, that's actually a pretty decent base, I think. Um, let's see. Gotta let that load up. Um, what else have I seen in here? I don't really remember. As mo I don't really remember most mo most people's bases. I don't. I don't want to randomly po poke through them. Um, so let's just do a little wrap up. I was gonna also show you what's on the dreadnoughts. Let's do that real fast. Hello. And I can't do anything. Oh my god. You're killing me. Let's just go back in the base. So I'll show you what I did to the to the um dreadnoughts. At least the inside of my base works okay. <laughs> so this is what I have now. I already had the armor on all of them, and really, really the building the ship and building the armor is, it really takes a lot of time on these things. So the armor didn't change, and it actually ended up being good because with the new halos, I think that's actually going to be a really good armor to have. So if you didn't get that from the last raid, you didn't get it from the whenever we got it last time. Um, that's oh, this one. That's actually I think a pretty decent armor to have. Um, so I went with two siege mortars. And then six hailstorm bees. So I have 24 hailstorm bees, which is a lot of hailstorm. You can see, you can saw, I sat under five VMs, and I don't think maybe one, one shell landed. Um, but what did I give up? I gave up high explosive shells, which I'm kind of okay with because I'm using S, which has the best, the best splash and. Um, the ship gives you better splash. Um, I never wanted a range finder anyway because I'm using S, which has the shortest spread, and the ship gives you less spread, gives you a, a help on the spread. Um, I switched from layered armor to compound armor because um, I wanted a better mix of protection. So with the bonus of the hailstorm bees, that gives me 61% explosion defense between naturally what the dread gives you, uh, then the percentages from the compound armor, then the percentages from the hailstorm. And then the missile defense, I am at 65%, which is a combination of the bonuses from the armor and the bonuses from the compound armor. And I still have 11,000 in armor for a eight mortar fleet. So, um, so I do have two specials that are dead empty, and I had to, had to bite the bullet and just say, "All right, I'm okay with that. I can live with that," because the fleet is so heavy. I can't. There is no special I can put up here, no matter even if I didn't want it. Uh, Thrusters one will not fit on four ships. Uh, with that much that's left. So this is what I'm doing now and, and I started this before the raid and didn't know what the special what the thing would be but now that I have 65% for uh, missile defense I think that that's actually going to help with halos because on a, let's say a floating fortress that has reactive armor 3 that only gets you to 66%. So I really have what's the equivalent of other people's reactive armor, other people's equivalent of AA armor, and then um, basically like a level 2 LA armor. So I, I'm, I'm actually very happy with this fleet so far. It, it just finished today. So this base that you saw me hit was only my third one. I hit two, early, two other ones earlier today. Um, and none of them have taken me very much damage so far. So that's actually worked out really good. Um, the defend fleet I'm sort of fiddling with. Um, they're, they're all that's a bad example. This one actually not quite all armored up. I still have two slots that don't have the heavy armor, but I do have the percentage. So I have 50% explosive explosive damage, and then um, 
hard barrels all loaders and this is hard barrels all loader studs hard barrels all loaders and these are all full armored up these two um, so from a mortar point of view from a mortar point of view these are very hard to kill from a uh, sub point of view maybe not so much um, and then I have this one <clears throat> which is I actually want to change the layered armor to. I was thinking that this is going to be a blitzing, I mean, a prepping fleet, but uh, I'm not so much sold on that anymore. So I'm probably going to change the layered armor to um, to AA armor, so I get a, a nice big explosion defense. Um, and then the other specials, I don't know what I'll do. Um, so that's really what's been going on. Um, what am I? What am I actually refitting? Oh well, way before dreads. Okay, before dreads came out, before we even knew we were going to get them, I had started building shells for strike cruiser for a second blitzing fleet because I have my siege mortar, siege cannon fleet. I was going to build just a cheap ripper fleet as a as a prepping sort of thing, and so I had gotten I had, had built them with uh, you know the basic little what I do for prepping sort of stuff and um, and I got him to two stripes for ranking up and then the raid came out with the dreads and then I just ignored this fleet for months basically two months <laughs> and uh, so I'm actually coming back to it now starting to rank it up again and now that I think I have some dreads I'm happy with I'm, I'm starting to work on this one and so what I'm going to do is start add just right now um, I'm just adding some things that aren't going to affect its rank up ability. So I'm going to add compound armor. I'm going to add um, something else. Auto loaders here, and then that'll eventually be engines, and then armor and stuff. So that's that's what I'm going to actually start building now. So I actually have a Ripper blitzing fleet and a siege cannon blitzing fleet, and so, so between the combination of the two. Um, you might use them both to, to hit a very hard base, or you might not. So, that's that. I'm curious also how much damage that last fleet did. So, that was the, that was the one that sat under the Howie. <laughs> so, that one got 30% damage, and the other ones are 1%. And since they're both both 1%, that probably means one mortar shell actually made it through, is what I'm thinking. So anyway, I I hope that helped. I hope that helped uh, with your with your base designs. Sometimes people ask me to look at their base and give them ideas. I only look at it from the viewpoint of what I would do to break it. I'm not always that good at at what makes a good base of what how to construct a good base. I am almost always stealing another design and then tweaking it some and right now I'm really thinking this is going to be the ne my next base uh, because it actually has nice double walls on the back just burns a little bit extra time for the blitzers it has a, actually the first two VMs that you come that you come into it's double walled even here so even though the Goliath is right here and splash is coming off um, what I was watching was the splash was coming off and it was taking off that first wall but it actually wasn't taking off that second wall and I really like that I really like that um, the guy with the strike cruise he actually pulled it all the way in so he could reach these to get to get these out of the way but it wasn't working that good um, so this is actually what I'm thinking I might go with next. This is going to be because he has no resource generators. It's going to be a little hard to map out, and it has a nice long thing for subs. So subs would have to come down, down, down. Well, actually, it could take out these two pretty easily, but it would have to travel a long way to get to these two. And once it's here, it's free game to surface. It might be. It might be why I have some of the Howies in here to make sure nothing, none of these little holes are free game. Um, but anyway, so that's the update. That's what's going on. Let's see if the map loads this time. I'm having horrible map loading problems. There we go. Oh, I never actually told it to go home. I just told it to go close to home. 
So I'm I'm curious. Let's just see. Oh, we're at halftime, so it's going to be a little bit a little bit uh, more awesome in the fact that it won't take long to repair. Oh, I beat it inside. Um, but then again, here's the here's that link again. Uh, O3H7P, capital O. That probably matters. It has it has some of my old designs like this one. This is my actually my current does no no no. No, this is not my current design. This is my old one, but you can see the block patterns. I think I even have the one before that with the block patterns. Uh, I think I even have the one before that with the block patterns. Yeah, here the one before that with the block patterns. So a lot of my older bases are in here. And if you wanted them, you can come in here and, and very easily figure out how to remake it. Um, and then just some different bases that I that I thought were interesting or hard. Sometimes if I scout a base, I'll go in here just to... Um, oh, you're killing me. Um, just to take a snapshot of it, so I'll come back later and then sort of figure out what I'm going to do to try to break that base. we're going to have this problem. Um, so that's there. That That's a resource you can use. Sometimes people ask me advice for bases and I just send them that link. Here, go look at this. Alright, so 30 minutes, 4 minutes. So in all reality we're looking at yeah, 30, 27 minutes. 27 minutes and I can go hit another base. Woo -woo. So alright, we all have a good night and I'm going to go hit another base in 20 Two minutes. All right. Bye-bye.